Welcome to Electron Online. Step by step, we're going to get a better understanding of what a Fourier transform is. The next step is understanding what happens when we change the width of the impulse, the single poles that we're sending into the Fourier transform. We already saw in the previous videos that when we have a single pulse and we take the Fourier transform, we get a function where we have the frequency represented, the amplitude versus frequency represented of a amplitude versus time function from a single pulse. Again, this is the pulse width, and using the mathematical definition of the Fourier transform, we were able to show you that the transformed function in the frequency domain, and of course, this should not be s, this should be omega, I'm thinking about the Laplace transform, but we're talking about the Fourier transform here, is equal to this sinc function. Notice that the sine of omega t over two divided by omega t over two is simply called the sinc function. This means exactly that. Notice that the amplitude of the central maximum right here is the amplitude of the function here times tau. And in this example, just like we previously did, we call tau equals to two seconds, which means that the amplitude here will be a times two seconds. If, for example, if we call uh, a equals to 10, then of course a times tau will be equal to 10 times two, which is equal to 20. That will be the amplitude of our frequency function. Where will the function cross over the horizontal axis? Again, we find those values by taking one over tau times two pi, two over tau times two pi, and so forth. And if tau is equal to two seconds, notice then omega tau over two, which is the angle of the sine here, well then tau becomes two, the two scans slide, and that means that omega t over tau simply become omega. And of course, when you have the sine of omega, that's under the circumstance, of course, when tau is equal to two, or sine of omega will be zero, when omega is pi, two pi, three pi, which means that this will be pi, this will be two pi, this will be three pi, four pi, and so forth. What happens now when we make the pulse narrower? Notice, we still go from minus tau over two to tau over two, but in this case, tau is only one second. Well, if we do that, it turns out that the whole function widens when we take the Fourier transform. Because notice that now one over tau becomes one over one. And again, let me, let me plug it in here, and you can see how that works. So if tau is equal to one, then omega tau over two is equal to omega divided by two. And that means that the sine of omega times two is equal to zero when, and so that is the question, when will this happen? Well, in this case, omega will need to be, oh, whoa, 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 oh, I made a mistake here. This is omega divided by two. I have omega divided by two. So the sine of omega divided by two is equal to zero when omega is equal to, so when, oh, kind of out of room, so I'm going to move over here when omega is equal to two pi, four pi, six pi, and so forth, and of course in the negative direction as well, which means it widens the whole function here in the frequency domain. So instead of crossing over at pi, it's going to cross over at two pi and at four pi and, and so forth. And let me complete that parenthesis there. So that's what happens when we narrow the pulse. It widens the function. Also, the amplitude changes, because remember, the amplitude is a times tau. So in this case, that would be a times tau, but now tau is only one. Let's assume that a is still equal to 10. So this would be equal to 10 times one, or 10. So it reduces the amplitude of the function, and it widens it. Consequently, what happens when we widen the pulse? Then, of course, the amplitude will go up, and the function becomes narrow. In other words, instead of going through the zero points, the horizontal axis at pi here, because this will be pi, two pi, three pi, this was two pi, four pi, six pi. Well, when we widen it, it'll be like a half a pi, one pi, one and a half pi, and so forth. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to take this single pulse and we're going to narrow it and narrow it and narrow it in the limit that the width goes to zero and then we'll see what happens when we take the Fourier transform and we'll take the pulse and we'll make it wider and wider and wider until it becomes infinitely wide 
and then again we'll see what happens to the Fourier transform. Again, this is how we take a look at the Fourier transform and get a better and better understanding. What happens to the Fourier transform, the graph, and the equations, when we start changing the input function. And so you can see that slowly but surely we'll have a good understanding of the Fourier transform. And that's how it's done.